and Assemblyman Kylie joins us now live from Sacramento to talk about this recall election. Assemblyman, as you referenced in that clip, if the governor is recalled and you are elected to replace him, you'd only be guaranteed one year in office. What might be different for Californians during that time if that happens? Well, things would be dramatically different. I would do things uh, in a totally different way than Gavin Newsom because, you know, Gavin Newsom, since he became governor, has used uh, his powers. And in the case of COVID-19, uh, the last year and a half, his extraordinary emergency powers, uh, not to serve the people of California or to move our state in the right direction, but rather uh, to reward the special interests that put him in office and that control our capital and certainly really control uh, this governor's office. And so what I think what the recall is really about is for the people of California to reclaim uh, control and ownership over their government. And so I would say if I got elected that the era of corruption is over, that a new era of integrity in government uh, has begun. And I would immediately call a special session of the legislature uh, to demand that they take action accordingly and start to address the key challenges facing our state rising crime rates, homelessness, uh, the cost of living, our failing public schools, and so forth. As in Lumen, Kyle, you mentioned a few issues there, but what would you say was the main issue that made you want to throw your name in the ring for governor? Well, I should say that, you know, I got involved with the recall last year and I had been, uh, you know, I didn't do so with the intention of running for governor. I did so because I had been in the legislature for five years and I've been fighting in every way I can uh, to try to reverse California's decline and get us moving in the right direction. And, uh, you know, over the last year and a half, I've been fighting against California's failed response to COVID-19 and to try to get that corrected. Uh, but, you know, I have not as one member of the legislature uh, been able to, to turn our state around. But with the recall, I see a whole new element being brought to the equation. It's the voice of the people themselves putting their mark uh, directly in our state government. And so I really got involved in a supporting role, but as we got closer to uh, this last phase of the election, uh, where we're actually voting on a potential replacement candidate. I had a lot of the people that I met along the way uh, tell me that they think that I could carry that torch of this movement, having been in the legislature for five years and knowing exactly how broken our state government is. I'd be in a position to, on day one, you know, to go about fixing the problems and to answer the call for change that this recall represents with fundamental reforms at our capital and a new direction for our state. Well, let's talk about COVID, Assemblyman, because that's certainly something that affects all of us in so many different ways, and it has for quite some time now. You call it a failed response. What would you have done differently? And are there other states out there that you look to and say, well, they did it right? Yeah, so other states have taken a much more balanced approach and trusted their citizens and have gotten a lot better results. You know, California has been a national outlier in every way when it's come to our COVID-19 response. So let's say that you're someone who thinks that lockdowns were the right thing to do. Well, did we really have to have the worst lockdowns of every, every state? We were 50th out of 50 in terms of what was allowed to be open. Or let's say you're someone who thought that maybe it was okay to shut down schools for a time. Why should we have been the very last state in the country or 50th out of 50 in getting our kids back to school? Uh, and you know the results speak for themselves. We've had the second highest unemployment rate throughout the COVID era. We've done more harm to our kids than any other state and our public health outcomes have been among the worst in the country. We've had a much higher than uh, average uh, excess mortality rate. In fact, if it was on par with the national average, then thousands more Californians would be alive today. So any way you slice it, I think holistically, California has had the worst experience of any state during the COVID era. And you could choose any number of states across the country and you could quibble, quibble with some of the things they've done here and there, but overall their outcomes have just been so much better. And so I take a balanced approach that actually trusts the people of California to make their own decisions rather than saying that government control and mandates are always the answer. Now you, you talk about that, but there's states like Florida, for example, or Texas and some of the states in the Southeast that have left it up to the people to make their own decisions. And they're having horrible results right now. Would we be more like Florida or would we be more like another state? Well, even if you look at Florida, which is very sadly having a big spike in cases right now, it is much smaller than the spike that California had last December. I mean, you had headlines that said California has the nation's worst coronavirus surge by a big margin. 
And, uh, you know, even if you look at compare Florida and California right now, in terms of the last year and a half, uh, California has a significantly higher excess mortality rate, which takes into account deaths from COVID-19, as well as drug overdoses, suicide, and all other causes. And so, you know, uh, even if you look at that state, which is having a bad go of it at this moment, uh, its outcomes have been better than California, but you could choose any number of other states uh, that have certainly done a lot better. And, you know, frankly, uh, th that's just one dimension of it. I mean, when you look at what we've done uh, to our public school system, I mean, in Los Angeles and LAUSD, so many kids there have just fallen off the map and have never even signed into Zoom school. And you have to ask why, why were our schools closed for so long? And there's even some question as to whether they'll open full time now. Uh, the governor knew that it was more harmful to keep kids out of school than to have them in school. He sent his own kids to in-person private school. The entire reason that our school system was shut down longer than any in the country is we have a state capital and a governor who is more subservient to special interests than any in the country. This is what his biggest benefactor, the teachers unions, who spends more on state politics than anyone, wanted him to do. And that's a perfect illustration of what I've seen in my five years at the Capitol, is that we have elected officials who simply don't serve the public interest. And right now, I think we have a golden opportunity to change that paradigm, to have a new paradigm of integrity and public service that prevails in our capital. Assemblyman Kylie, along the lines of the pandemic, two big, highly debated issues right now, vaccinations and masks. What is your stance on masks and vaccination mandates for businesses and schools, as you mentioned? Well, the school uh, mask mandate, I would reverse immediately. And when you look at countries like the United Kingdom, I mean, first of all, within our country, California is among the minority of states uh, that has a statewide uh, school closure order or school mask order. Uh, if you look at the United Kingdom, for example, they've said we're not going to have masks required uh, for elementary school kids uh, because the harms to a child's development far outweigh uh, any benefits. And those benefits, by the way, have not really been clearly established. And it's it's certainly true uh, that, you know, the, the harms of, of to a child's development or other things associated uh, with wearing a mask probably vary a lot from child to child, which is why it should be in the hands of parents. Parents know what is best for their kids. I'll say as a broader point, by the way, that this would be a lot less of a conflict if California would embrace school choice. If we gave parents more options as to where to send their kids to school, then parents who want to send their kids to a school where masks are required could do so, and parents who want to send their kid to a school where masks are not required uh, could do so. However, it's the very same dominance of the teachers' unions in, this ed in the education establishment <clears throat> that has led California to eliminate options for parents as to where they send their kids to school, which is, by the way, something that I think is so powerful about the opportunity we have right now, because California's uh, failures during the COVID era have taken everything that it was wrong with our state government already that was already causing California's decline and has just kind of showcased it, has taken it to another level. So I think we right now have an opportunity not just to reject the abuses and the failures of the Newsom governorship, but to hurt, turn the page on this whole uh, era of decline and failure and actually start to lead the nation in the right ways again. Assemblyman, we got to run here. Uh, quick question and just a couple seconds here, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, what's one thing the governor's done well that you would agree with you think he's done a good job at? I think that, uh, you know, one example would be that a couple years ago, uh, he came out and was very outspoken against uh, what's now being called CRT uh, or ethnic studies. The first version of that curriculum when it came out two years ago, uh, Gavin Newsom said that it was offensive in so many ways uh, and that it would never see the light of day. Uh, now his position, and he actually vetoed uh, the first version of the bill to make that mandatory. Uh, there's another version of that bill that is now making its way through the legislature. Uh, I spoke against it on the floor of the assembly, uh, and uh, you know we'll see what his position is this time. Okay, Assemblyman Kevin Kiley, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the uh, recall election here, just uh, less than four weeks away. Now we have a complete guide to the recall election up on our website for you, fox5sandiego.com. You'll see a button on the right side of your screen that says recall election. Just click on that, you'll find all sorts of resources, including a list of the candidates, a look at the questions on the ballot, and how and when you can vote.